Hello, 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 everybody, and happy, fabulous Friday to you. I hope everybody is having an amazing day, a fabulous Friday, that your day has been uh, filled with blessings and, and, and may God break through and pour into you like never before. So I just want to speak a blessing over you. Uh, I am Prophetess Trish Morris at of Trisha Ministries, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I just want to give you a few minutes of empowerment, a few minutes of encouragement, a few minutes of what uh, the Lord has really just put in me to share with you. Hey, Prophetess, thank you, Valerie, for coming on. I appreciate you so much. Um, so, uh, you know, your word for the day, we're, we are, <clears throat> we're in the last month of the year and I know many of you are looking back over 2018 and analyzing the year, analyzing, uh, what has happened, what didn't happen, what transpired, what didn't transpire. You looked at relationships that you have, you looked at relationships that you don't have, uh, relationships that you're believing God for. Some of you are believing God for spouses and increased income and just so many great and marvelous things. And I think that that is amazing uh, that you do that because God said, you know, we have to write the vision. We have to make it plain. We have to have something to hope for. And so I wanted to encourage you on this journey of hope, on this journey of just uh, getting to the next level of purpose, of breakthrough. I made a, a couple of posts this week, uh, something that God really put in my heart. It said, destiny call and said, you need to make some changes for 2018. And I put a say law behind that because I wanted you guys to really think about destiny. I want you to really think about purpose. And I really want you to think about what your life looked like in 2017, this year. What did it look like that you say, I can't do that in 2018? I wanna challenge you to make changes, uh, you know, some of the things that we're so connected to, so tied to uh, emotionally, uh, uh, just relationally, are things that keep us frustrated, depressed, keep us broke as a joke, let's be honest. And so I really want you to analyze where you're, where you're at right now. This is your 2017. We're still in it. But what is it that you're going to do differently for 2018? So as a man think it, so is he. You know, if you think that you don't deserve more or you can't get more, you don't deserve better, you can't get better, then guess what? Chances are you're probably right. If you think that, you know, you should be doing even greater than you did in 20, in this year for 2018, chances are you're probably right. But if you continue to hang on to the same people, the same ideas, the same concepts that absolutely got you nowhere, your 2018, I can promise you, is pretty much going to mirror your 2017. So I want to encourage you, don't be afraid to step away from the things, the people that are holding you back, things, the people that, that God is saying, I need to disconnect. Don't worry, you're going to be okay if you disconnect. Don't worry, it, you're going to be okay if you simply trust me, if you simply step out on faith and do what I told you to do. If you don't want 2018 to mirror your 2017, I challenge you to do something differently with your life. Invest in yourself. I mean, just begin to think about how can I improve me? Whether that means go buy you a book, go get you, uh, take a webinar, go to a conference, go do something to help you be a better you. Because here's the thing, God gave me, he said there has to be a shift in our mindsets. If we keep the same mindset going into this new year, then there are things that are going to be consistent in our 2018 that we're trying to avoid in our now. So I want you to seriously, guys, don't, don't just, you know, wait till we wait till the new year come in and we, we got all these all these things that we want to do and things that, you know, I'm excited this year. I want to do that. But no, I, I need you to be in 2018 right now, you know, because you need to be strategizing and planning, coming up with a system for your life. You know, in business, I'm a businesswoman. I run uh, an enterprise. You know, I, I 
As business people, we strategize every quarter, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. We should know already what we're going to be doing for 2018, what we, what, what our mindset is, what is going to happen in the first quarter, what are your numbers going to look like, what's your vision, what's the strategy, what are you going to do? So I'm, I'm going to challenge you. Have you written out your quarterly vision for your company called you for 2018? What is it that you want? Don't wait till January 1st. Don't wait till December 31st to be like, oh, well, you know, I, I, you know, I, my new year resolution is this. No, no, no. Here's the thing. I want to teach y'all something. I want you to get you a plan. First quarter is going to be January, February, March. What are the goals that you're going to accomplish in January, February, March? Write them down and make them plain. What are things that you're not going to tolerate in January, February, March? What are things that you're going to adjust in January, February, March? I need to, because destiny has called y'all. Some of y'all need to answer the telephone. Destiny called and said, you need to make some changes for your 2018. And so I don't want you to wait till 2018 come in. I want you to begin strategizing right now. Now is the time to strategize. What does it look like? What is the first quarter going to look like for you? Do you have any business goals, any financial goals? Are you looking to get a raise on your job? Or are you just content with just, you know, mosing along, get your check every week and struggling check to check, trying to figure out how to pay your bills? You are not planning, you're not strategizing, and you're not implementing. Here's the thing. You say wisdom is everything, you know, but it's the application. If you know that something ain't right in your life, that's wisdom, right? You know it, right? Okay, great. But there is no power with your wisdom if you do absolutely nothing about that that is wrong in your life. What is it that you're going to do to make adjustments? Now, this can be in relationships, whether you're in marriage, what are you going to do differently for your spouse? Or, 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 or some of you may be engaged or, or hoping to be engaged, but a lot of times our nasty attitude will keep us from being and having that that we have. So what are you going to do about your attitude? Come on, let's make it plain. Let's talk about it. What are you going to do first and foremost about your thinking? Because some of it show has been a little bit stinking because you're, you got stinking thinking that are manifesting things in your life that are not getting you any closer to the destiny that God would prefer that you have. You know, God has great things. You know, the children of Israel, they were supposed to have been in Canaan like a few days ago, right? But they took 40 years. Why? Because of the attitude, the mumbling, the complaining, and then half of them didn't even get in. It was the next generation that got in. Are you going to be in a position where you're going to mutter, you're going to grumble, and you're going to complain about your life because it's not what you wanted to be. You're not where you wanted to, you're not where you want, it's not going where you wanted to go. You still broke, busting, and disgusting. You still ain't got your bow ass. You still ain't got the increase in your finances, and you mutter and you complain. You got the wisdom of what you don't have. You got the wisdom of what you want, but there's no application to go with that that you're talking about. See, this is where I talk about a ministry where you talking, but you ain't really walking. Come on, somebody. You talking about the wisdom that God gave you. You know you broke. You know you got an attitude. You know you need to do X, Y, and Z for your business to get together. You know that you need to write a book. You got the wisdom. That ain't the problem. You know you deserve better than what you're getting from this man that you think is your husband really ain't, you know you deserve more, but you got the wisdom for you too scared to walk that thing out. Come on, somebody. See, we do a lot of talking about 2018. We do a lot of talking about New Year's. We do a lot of talking about expectation and goals. But where are the walkers? I want to know where are the walkers, the, the people that say, I'm finna to walk this thing out and I'm finna to make it do what it does and I'm going to do everything that God told me and I'm not going to settle. Some of you got to tell yourself for your new year that you're coming into, I ain't settling this year. I'm I'm sorry. Some of y'all about 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, and you still doing the same thing. You still struggling. You still uh, 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 folk, ain't investing in yourself, ain't doing nothing to get yourself to the next level, and you still complaining, and you still living the same life you was living 10 years ago. Where is your change going to come? I tell you when your change is going to come. It's when this right here. Do you you gotta have more than 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 just this idea 
This right here has to trigger something in this right here, which is your heart. And when it triggers something in this right here, which is your heart, your heart will trigger something in this right here down below, which are your feet. And so when all of these work in conjunction with one another, your mind talks to your heart, your heart talks to your feet, your feet talk to your hand. And before you know it, you doing the unexpected. You're going in directions that you never imagined that you would be going in because it's no longer talking about how horrible 2017 was. It's no longer talking about the woulda, coulda, shoulda, but now it's some action put behind them size tens that you got on, put behind them size seven and a half, them eights, whatever it is. Now it's some action that's being brought into place behind the talking. So I want to tell y'all today, talk is cheap. What are you going to do to get yourself established? How long are you going to go settling? How long is it going to take you to get the picture that you deserve more? That greater is that hand, but you can't get to it because you too scared. You are too scared to step on the water. You are too scared to make the investment. You are too scared to leave the person that ain't meant you no good from day one. But because because that's all you know. You are too scared to leave Egypt, which is a place of bondage. See, the children of Israel were in Egypt, but they actually liked that Egypt because they were comfortable in Egypt. But God said, no, you know, I'm trying to bring you out. And when he was bringing them out of the bondage, they was like, well, you know, God, I don't know about this because this process is just, is just doing something to me. This process is just doing this to me. This process, this process. And I don't know about this process. It's too hard. It's too hard. I thought that if I, if I went on this process out of Egypt onto Canaan, that it would be easy. But now I see that at least when I was in Egypt, I had a man. At least when I was in Egypt, I had, come on, fill, fill in the blank with what it is. At least when I was in Egypt, I had such and such and such. And, such. and so this process is too drastic. And I don't know if I want to get to that next level because the process got me alone. Got me a little broke. Got me a little something. The process. You know, y'all know my story. I I see it coming. Some people are not scared, but just don't know how. That's a good point. Even in your not knowing, there's this thing called faith. That even if I don't know, I'm still gonna do it. Come on, somebody. What well, y'all look at me? I'm black as all they all they get out. Ain't no ain't no Hispanic mixed in me. No no nothing. I'm just Negro. I'm black. Okay. But let me tell you, you're looking at a school teacher who God told to go and and start a translation agency. What the world? I have no clue what I'm doing, God. I have no clue. So it was the fact that. I just didn't know what I was doing. And I'm going to tell the truth. In my not knowing, I was scared because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know the steps to take. And that made me nervous. That made me scared. That made me uh, anxious. That made me so many different emotions. It made so many different emotions come up on the inside of me. And in my not knowing, in my scared, in my not truly getting a big picture. Because let me tell you something. God will give you a picture, a puzzle. I, I love how Prophet Wise uh, in, in our church, he gave it. It's like if you can envision this as the puzzle, right? This is a little magazine, little local magazine. But you know how God will give a puzzle and this is the box to the puzzle. He give you the picture of what the puzzle is supposed to look like. But on the inside, you get all the pieces and the pieces just fall out. And you're supposed to figure out how to put the darn thing together and don't let it have 5,000 pieces to it. Because it's like, oh, I mean... 5,000 pieces, I got to sit here and put this, this puzzle, I got to put this picture together out of these 5,000 pieces. Come on, God. Why couldn't I just open the box and, and the puzzle just be right there? The pieces just be right there. It's the not knowing where to start is what God gives us every single time. And all in the midst of you not knowing, all God wants to know is do you got faith? You may not know your A from your Z, but all God wants to know, do you got faith? 
Because if you want your 2018 to look different and you don't know how to walk away, you just got, I'm going to tell you how to do it. You just got to do it with your knees shaking, shaking and your teeth shattering and, and you're trembling. This is how you do it. Scare and all and without a clue. Without a clue, you don't know nothing. You don't know nothing. You just know that you're supposed to do it. Well, God, if I leave him, then then what if this is the picture that I it looked like we happy on this picture, but when people open up your puzzle, they see that it don't look like the picture after all. You know? But you portraying like this the one that God told you to marry, but that ain't was that God for real? You portraying that this is what God told you to do because you feel comfortable there. You feel absolutely comfortable there. But that ain't that ain't God. That's you talking about talking through your comfortability. But I'm gonna tell you when you know it's God. Y'all get this. If y'all don't hear nothing else, when you know it's God. Is when you feel real uncomfortable with your comfortable. Mm, that's good. When you know it's God, you begin to feel real uncomfortable with what you always been comfortable with. Because God is saying, I no longer want you there. I want you over here. And in order for me to get you over there, I got to make you feel uh, real uncomfortable with where you at right now. So when you start to feel real uncomfortable about where you at and what you're doing and the person that you supposedly with and, and, and they making you, they stressing you more than they blessing you. I tell y'all all time, it might be time to let that joke go, especially if y'all ain't married because I'm just saying like you ain't got to put up with that if you choosing to put up with that. But anyway, but when you begin to feel real uncomfortable with your comfortable. That's when you know that that's a tugging and an inclination from God. To keep it moving, Susan. I just want y'all to think about it. Because Destiny called and said, you got to make some changes for your 2018. And you, and in order for you to do that, you're going to be real uncomfortable with your comfortable. That could be with your job. That could be with relationships. That could be with finances. That could be with anything. But you have the knowledge that you're real uncomfortable with your comfortable. But what God is looking for now is the application of knowing that God is trying to take you somewhere different. Will you trust him or will you stay comfortable with what God is trying to make uncomfortable in your life? That's it. So for the next few weeks, I'm going to be challenging you in different ways about where God is taking you for 2018. I'm going to be challenging you. I'm going to, I, 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 I am going to intentionally make you uncomfortable. I'm going to intentionally make you think. I'm going to intentionally push you to somewhere greater. I'm going to intentionally do it because we grieve God when we don't do what he tells us to do. And then when all this stuff come in and the fresh anxiety, and God was like, yeah, I knew you was going to, you know, encounter that because I told you kind of long, like a year or two years ago to make a move and do something different, but you were comfortable with your uncomfortableness that I was putting on you. You kind of ignored it and kept it going and you didn't pay me any attention. So God's saying, I, I, I want you to get uncomfortable. And, and not just uncomfortable, but I want you to do something about your discomfort. So here's a challenge. I want you to do what I started out talking about. I want you to come up with a quarterly goal for 2018. Quarterly goal, and I want you to write down what's going to happen the first quarter of your life in 2018. What are, cha what are the changes that you're going to make? What are the decisions of faith that you're going to take? Then second quarter, what is that going to look like? Third quarter, what is that going to look like? Fourth quarter. See, this is what conglomerations do. This is what major corporations do. That's why they're so successful, many of them anyway. They sit down and they strategize and they plan what their company is going to look like. But with our life, 
which is our company, we don't sit down and we don't strategize and we don't plan as to what that's going to look like. And so we just haphazardly live life. We haphazardly live life. And we soon find out that the same life we was living 10 years ago is the same life we live in right now. 10 years, ain't no 10 years ago to today, ain't nothing happened. You might have had a baby in the process. You know, you might have got a dollar raise in the process. But the way you felt 10 years ago, you still feel the same way now. What's changed? No, nothing really, because you didn't sit down and you didn't strategize your conglomeration, your empire. You didn't sit down and strategize and come up with a, a, a something major for your empire to grow and expand and reach boundaries that you've never before reached. You didn't do the work. You accepted whatever came to you. And that's not what CEOs of empires do. I want y'all to think about it. Think about it. And this was in me so, so strong that God was like, you know, challenge them, challenge them. And he told me to open up my From Draft the Fab in 21 Days program. Some of y'all need to take that program because this is a mental challenge. My uh, From Draft the Fab program is a mental challenge, 21 days. And many people say, well, why you do it for 21 days? Because 21 days is the amount of time that statistically speaking, they say that it takes you to form a habit. So if I can challenge you for 21 days to form a new habit in your thinking and, and then I they get you to do some implementation of different things, then I can change your life. But some of us are still stuck on stupid and wonder why Susu getting blessed and couldn't Rick then got him a brand new house and a car. And why why did Sarah get married? And she, I've been waiting on a man longer than her. And how did Sarah get the good man that loved the Lord? And my, my husband over here struggling. He strung out on drugs. And I'm just struggling. You are the CEO of your conglomeration. But you're doing nothing to build your empire. And building the empire starts from within. I don't want you to look at your husband or look at this girl from around the way or your friend. I want you to start from within and I want you to dissect you. I want you to dissect your fears, your, 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 your doubts, your everything. I need you to dissect you. Stop dissecting your husband. Stop dissecting your children. Stop dissecting your boss. Dissect you. You are the CEO of your conglomeration, but you're acting like you're the janitor. Now, don't get me wrong. The jan we need the janitors in the conglomeration because we need stuff done. But, but if you, where's the CEO mindset? I mean, where's the CEO mindset? I am, the, I am an empire. I'm a major enterprise. My company should be growing and seeing fruit and multiplying exponentially. My company, look, 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 look. This is me. This is my company. My company, but we still broke. I'm still mad at my husband. My wife still ain't doing what she need to do. My children, and we look at everything else. But this is a challenge. I'm, 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 if you want to get in uh, my Draft the Path program, it's going to be open this month. $47 or 21 day coaching program. It's open to whoever. You know, I don't do a lot of upsets. I don't try to convince people to, you got to do this and you got to pay this money because it's going to be this. I just tell you, it's open. And if God leads you to take that, that 21 day uh, challenge to change your mindset so you could do something different about your life, then you need to do that. Go to trishamnow.com. If you're not prophetic, uh, and you don't want to be in my prophetic program, I am a coach. I'm a mentor. I, I, I deal with people's minds and people's spirits, and I challenge them. That's what God has called me to do. I challenge people to get to another level. So if you're not prophetic and don't need to be in my prophetic program, get in my from draft the fab in 21 days. I, I can guarantee your mind going to change about the way your life is and where your life is headed. And 2018 is going to look totally different. If you implement a lot of the stuff that I tell you to implement and from Draft the Fab in 21 days.
So check it out at trishamnow.com and go into the site, go into my store. It's open. But I just, I want you to just understand that your next is now. But if you don't take on the CEO role of your life, you're going to live the next 10 years like the previous 10 years. The next 10 years are going to look like the last 10 years. And then you're going to be looking at other folks getting jelly. You know what jelly is? Yep, jealous, a little envious, a little sick and tired of seeing other folk get blessed, and I'm still struggling. That's what's going to happen to you. And God was saying, look, I'm not a respectful person. I did it for them. I do it for you. I just need your mindset to change. So I hope this blessed y'all. I hope this struck a chord in you somewhere deep down on the inside of you that God is requiring us to become the CEOs of our very own empire. Share this word with somebody because somebody needs to hear it today, okay? Thank y'all so much for tuning in. I see quite a few comments coming in. I, uh, I try not to look at the comments a lot because I try to stay focused on what God is what God is saying. So, um, so I may not catch everybody's comments, but I thank y'all for commenting. I thank y'all for your feedback. And I also want to thank y'all for sharing this word because somebody needs to hear it. All right, guys. Well, y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. And remember, you are the CEO of your very own empire. And it's time for you to start acting like it. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>